Today we're going to be talking about structure and the initial balance for the week. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's the weekend, relatively quiet end to the week yesterday. It was a holiday in the US prior to the July 4th weekend. So very thinly traded after that initial uh, Europe London window sort of petered out but some huge moves this week in the markets some textbook perfect trade setups today I've received a ton of emails just in the last couple of days and some really great questions I appreciate the questions and the emails and again I, I will get through to everybody I promise you if I'm not back to you right away it's because I'm just responding to a lot of comments questions and emails and again, thank you for hitting the like button. So today we're gonna to go a bit more in depth in the structure and the initial balance. I've had a lot of questions from people still confused during the high, about the high and the low of the day, but the structure. And structure is really where everything starts to me. I talk about reading Peter Brandt's books, Schaubacher. I have a massive amount of respect for Peter because he's just a pure classical chartist, but he his approach is so, simplistic but at the same time it's he's a master craftsman and what I really like about Peter's approach and why I talk about the same simple steps every single day is because you can duplicate them they're easy to agree upon but it also has to do with structure the, the structure and a term that Peter talks about all the time are patterns within patterns so today we're going to look at structure in a bit more detail we're going to look at some textbook perfect trade setups from the week and how structure tied into those but the initial balance so initially when the week starts out we are either inside or outside of a range depending on where Monday opens up if we open up within Friday's range or Friday's high or Thursday's low whatever that may be we're inside of a structure a high and a low and if you think in simple terms, a lot of the reversal patterns, you know, they might be up one week, we're in an up template, then the next week we're in a down template. And then a lot of that reversal and changing of direction happens in that initial balance. In a large percentage of, of the time, maybe over 80 to 90%, Monday and Tuesday will often form the high or low of a week. And what's important to understand about that is that when we go and look at the bigger structure, as the week unfolds, we talk about some of the best and biggest trade opportunities come more towards the end of the week. But sometimes when these are set up in that initial balance, the big move starts in the middle of the week or in that second day of the week. And then we see it reverse or continue at the end of the week. So we're going to just go into that a bit more in depth. And just to explain that term initial balance, it's something that, they, that Dalton talks about in the Mind Over Markets book, uh, Market Profile. People who, are, who trade Market Profile will be familiar with that term. It's usually um, a tactical bit of information the market provides to traders in that first half an hour or hour of the day or session that in, that in a large majority of the cases establishes the higher the low for that session or the day. Now there are four different types of opens in market profile but for the sake of how we're approaching this and, and going back to Peter Brandt and I talk about horizontal ranges we will have a high and a low often in place whether it's Friday, Monday, uh, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There will often be a peak formation high and low that the market will at some point either trade inside of in a trading range from, from from high to low for the entire week or we may have at some point a breakout pullback and a trend continuation as we saw in a couple of the pairs this week and we're going to look at those or we may see breakout pull pullback for a false break reversal which we will often see sometimes on the high and low of the week but also in a large majority of cases the high and low of the day and that's what we're going to look at today as well so just to reiterate often when we have a high 
in a low from Friday, Monday, or Friday. Monday opens up, and at some point we may break out and form a new low. So Monday can form a new low. Friday's high is here, Monday's low is here. Monday's high is here. So our initial range from Monday for the week would be Monday's high and Monday's low. But we've also had a breakout of a trading range. And depending on how Monday trades, we may see that move continue on Tuesday. But we may see that pull back inside as well and come back up and stay inside of that trading range. And again, we mark off that high and Tuesday's low. But if we've pulled back inside of Monday's low, we, mount, we now may have a peak formation low in place. And we're going to talk about the different scenarios that can play out. But we have our low of the week and we have our high of the week. That first couple days of the week is what we will call our initial balance. This trading range is where the rest of the week potentially will either stay inside of or in some cases be broken out of and we could be targeting a measured move of this distance of this initial balance either on the upside or the downside. And there are a couple of different scenarios and obviously how that trades set, those trades set up. That comes back to our structure, our high and low of the day, our timings, our round numbers and engulfments and pin hammers for the entries and exits. So we're going to look at some of the initial balances for the week, how that information can be important to us based on how the markets set up each day once that is established because we'll be, we'll be possibly just buying low and selling high or we may be in breakout pullback for trend continuations which again depending on how these set up in our 12 candle window that information will already possibly be obvious in terms of the direction that we're looking for. So for example, if we're looking for a long trade, then we can expect a stop hunt low before the long trade sets up. Or if we're expecting a short trade, we may expect the stop hunt to be high for the sell setup to the downside. We saw some great level three trades set up on payrolls on Thursday. We saw some fantastic structure and patterns within patterns, pound, yen, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to look at those. But really important to understand the concept of Monday, Tuesday, and in some cases Friday, how that gives us our initial balance and the potential for measured moves and also how to plan out or have a thesis for how our 12 candle window could play out and if we are in trades that don't move, how that can tra transfer into the next window for the U.S. session to see that measured move or the bigger trade play out with no heat or no stress. So just to review structure, rectangles, head and shoulders, double tops, double bottoms, reverse head and shoulders, ascending triangles, descending triangles. Those are the most common. We did see a symmetrical triangle. This week, that was textbook perfect, and again, that was a pattern within a larger rectangle for the measured move. Then we talk about the high and the low of the day, and again, we're going to review some, some just perfect setups that explain how the market will set up a high and set up a low, and then work one side or the other for the move back in the other direction. And then our timings, 8 to 11 p.m., 2 to 5 a.m. and 8 to 11 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. We also talked about 717, the hour before all these windows as a potential stop hunt area to set up a trade for that 33 in that first hour of the 12 candle window. And the importance around numbers. Most of these trades are constantly moving off of round number levels at highs and lows of the day or off of those patterns within patterns. And engulfments and pin hammers, those are the confirming signals that the market has ready to move or locked in that area on three pushes or breakout pullback or a false break reversal. 
with a pin hammer confirming that as the last stop punt into the traders who have got the trade right before they shift the market for 50 or more pips. So again, just reviewing the three things that markets do, they break out, they pull back and they trend. They break out, they pull back and they reverse for the false break reversal. And they break out, they pull back and they stay in a trading range. So hopefully you'll get some value from today's video. We're gonna see the same things next week, just different variations. Keep it simple, keep getting better, 1% better every single day, and may the markets go with you. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, continuing our discussion on the initial balance and structure, and also patterns within patterns. What we'll do first is we'll just go through each of the pairs and look at the Monday, Friday initial balance uh, into the early part of the week. Looking at the pound Aussie, the market opens up inside of Friday's range. We have Friday's low, blue line, pink line is our dividing between Friday and Monday. The market breaks through the low of Friday and closes into the end of the session um, in going into Tuesday. So when that market closes, we know we now have a new high of the week that's been established and we have a low of the week. In the early part of Tuesday in the, the Asian window, the market drops through the low of the week, extending our range further out, but it pulls back inside of Monday's range before auctioning back up towards the most recent swing high and then takes that out and then to the previous sessions US high but the purpose of just this introductory part is that we'll look at the initial high and low of the week now in this particular case we will redraw that low for Tuesday but we'll leave Monday's low in place because Monday's high Monday's low because Tuesday came back inside, we can now look at this range as our trading range potentially for the week or for a breakout area for a possible measured move or just a trading range. So if we zoom in on this and we go look at back towards the first part of the week, we have a low of the week in place and the market auctions down into the Asian 12 candle window without taking out the low. Pulls back up, hitting the high of the day, going sideways underneath that peak formation, and you'll notice we have a high bull candle. We talked about the high low and the low, the, sorry, the high bull and the low bear. The very importance of all the structural patterns are where you are at heading into the 12 candle window. When we talk about high bull, low bear, high of the day, low of the day, high of the week, low of the week, it's all relevant to where we're at in that 12 candle window when, in terms of that high and low, when we head into that window. So traders ask to go over entries and exits. These are fantastic ways for you to learn. This is an engulfment, a three bar engulfment. The market goes sideways underneath the high bull. Again, the, the thesis is they haven't taken out the low of Friday, but we've pulled back from Friday and they've auctioned in three pushes to the low without taking it out before moving up and then engulfing and going sideways and also giving us the pin hammer. And you'll notice we're right at round numbers, the quarter level. But the thesis then for structure is this. We have a rectangle. We have a rectangle that we're trading inside of. And that rectangle now can be potentially a measured move from the high where the move starts to the low. We have a breakout, pullback, another engulfment for a continuation. The market extends out for that second level. Doesn't get there on Monday, but as we head into Tuesday, that second level is hit. Now, some traders may have taken their 50 pips. They may have held on for more, left a trailer in. Uh, but again, you can see where traders were up 75 pips 
and the market came back to stop on traders who were short. Breakout pullback. So again, a pattern, uh, rectangle structure. And on Monday, as we head into the beginning of the week, as that range expands, we'll just zoom in here and clear this out again. As that range expands, now we have a high of the week and our range of the from Tuesday's low becomes the low of the week. Now technically we're back inside of Monday's range, but this is our high and our low. Now it's really important because we talked, oh, I mentioned that in a large percentage of the case, Monday, Tuesday will often end up being the high or the low of the week. So if we have that in the back of our mind and we redraw our high and our low each day. So we head into the next session. We have our low of the day and our high of the day because the market opens up inside of this range. It breaks out, gives us an engulfment off the low of the day. We'll zoom in here. Some people um, haven't been able to see things as clear. I apologize. I've tried all different settings, and this is a high-def screen capture. So we're working on improving that. But we have a lower structure in place as well. The market engulfs and reverses. And this is a, for traders, if you zoom in on a smaller time frame, you'll see that this pattern is a W formation. On a smaller time frame, it's still a W on the 15 minute, just not as clearly visible to the uh, naked eye. So we have a smaller structure that pulls back inside of the range before coming back to the high of the day going sideways, one push, two pushes, three pushes, stop hunt back into the traders who are long, into our 12 candle window, and also on top of the low of Monday before reversing back towards the high of Monday's U.S. session. And again, you'll notice, just, just zooming in, we're inside of a rectangle. Now, as we had one push, two pushes, three pushes up. We also have redrawn lows in place. And the last low becomes our first level. Now we have a higher low up top. But again, that's broken in Asia. So again, we, we, we see the market has gone up and formed another geometrical structure. So this is a smaller rectangle inside of a larger rectangle before stop hunting back down on the redrawn low. So this is now our anchor point low for geometry. Pushes up, pushes up, pushes up a third time. And we have our smaller geometrical pattern, but that pattern fails. And the market in the Europe open comes one push, two pushes, three pushes down. And again, just talking about structure. All of these smaller patterns are potential geometrical structures for measured moves. So we get a three push pattern down to the low of the day. So we have a rectangle, one push, two push, three pushes, and a reversal at the end of the 12 candle window. Now we can target a measured move of this geometrical structure. We see the market goes up one, two full expansions hitting the measured move. But remember, we're in a larger rectangle, so there's a pattern within the pattern. The last point where the market, rever before it reversed, and the high. We see a breakout, pullback, and a continuation. So a full expansion, the market breaks out, pulls back, stop hunts traders who are long in our U.S. session 12 candle window before reversing up a full expansion of that bigger rectangular structure. So again, just to zoom back out, we have bigger rectangle for the initial balance. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have the smaller geometrical patterns inside. So rectangles, rectangles, breakout, pullback, continuation. And then we get to Thursday and we do the same thing. We redraw our structure. Bring that right across. This is a Thursday, so we're thinking potentially level three, midweek 
reversal. We have our rectangular structure in place. The market breaks out, pulls back, tries to continue, and reverses. False break reversal. But we have a swing low in place, which now can also become a geometrical pattern for a measured move. Even though it's small, it's 25 pips. And that market moved two times that expansion before heading sideways into the close of the session. So patterns within patterns, rectangles, false breaks, breakout pullback, continuations for the measured moves. Now just to look at the bigger structure, again we see one, one push up on Tuesday, two pushes up on Wednesday, and then a one, two, three, or a one, two, three, depending on how you want to look at that, on Thursday for our 33 setup up top, and the reversal down, and then the consolidation sideways underneath the peak formation. Possible we could see a retest of the low of the week. But again, initial balance, Monday's high and low. Monday, Tuesday, form the low of the week. This is a great example on the pound New Zealand. Again, uh, looking at Monday, very similar to the uh, pound Aussie. We have Monday's high. It breaks the low of Friday before consolidating and going sideways. And we'll zoom in on this. You're going to see these same patterns show up over and over again. So we talk about structure. We have a low in Asia and a high in Asia. Market breaks the low, expands the range, hits the high before going one push, two push, three pushes, pins on top, middle structure with the bull pin, and then a bear pin. So we have our bear pin, pin hammer, we have an engulfment in the middle, and a pin hammer. Engulfments and pin hammers. We have a, a geometrical structure for a measured move. Okay, so you can target 50 pips or you can target a measured move. We see one, two full expansions, which is the, the normal measuring target on the smaller structures for me. That's what I target. On the bigger structures, I'll look for a full expansion, one full expansion of that range. And depending on how it trades, maybe two. But typically on the smaller structure in the intraday, because I know that they will come back usually for the stop hunt, 50 pips or two times the geometric range as it breaks out of that structure. So the market hits that and then goes into consolidation. But now we redraw our high and our low. We have our high of the week and we have our low of the week. And the market trades sideways inside the U.S. session high. And again, this is where I talk about high and low of the day versus high and low of the, the real high and low. You'll see where they've trapped traders inside of this 25 pip box, working it sideways, working it sideways, trapping traders in both directions inside before hitting the high. So this is called working the high. Not just a breakout pullback, but a one push, two pushes, three pushes sideways, little pins, and then pulls away for the stop hunt back towards the low of the Europe London window, engulfment, sideways structure for the move back to the high of the day. So again, this is an example of a three bar reversal. But now we have our initial balance. We have Monday's high, Tuesday's, sorry, Monday's high, Monday's low is our initial balance. And as we get towards the end of the week on Wednesday, typically is Midweek reversal, we see one push, two pushes, three pushes, and dropping back down inside. That's a smaller structure of a head and shoulders. Three push pattern, whatever you want to call it. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And then dropping back down inside of Monday's high. So when we see that pull back inside, we're thinking Monday's low is our target. And that's where we start talking again about asymmetrical risk reward. If this was the case, we could expect possibly stop hunt high for a sell setup. But the market drops down and starts to move lower. Traders chase that move short. They hit it once, 
They hit it a second time, go into consolidation, and then a one, two, three reversal at the redrawn high of the day for an engulfment on the break of the bull candle and the measured move back down towards the low of the previous day. Now if we zoom in, we can see that the market obviously eventually moved then into Friday to take out the low of the week and then go into consolidation. We're going to look at a couple of textbook setups now on the pound yen, but I think you get the idea. Each week they'll reset the template. So they might use Friday's low, as we see with the pound yen. They might use Monday's high, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It could be a Friday, Monday, Tuesday. But we see Friday's low. The market moves up in Asia, hitting stops. One of these, one of these highs, it, it doesn't matter. We come to the screen towards the end of the Asian session. The market has put a high in place. We have the low of, the, of Friday. We have the high of Asia before they come back. One, two, three, above the double zero, oh, sorry, above 50 and going to consolidation. A second push to the high. Not quite a full engulfment. Then a third push bull pin reversal to the high and an engulfment. We'll just mark this off. An engulfment and then, of course, pin hammer. Engulfment, pin hammer. That's the stop on against the traders who have entered the trade in the right direction and then move back down to the low of the day. So we have our initial balance. We have Monday's high, Friday's low. Now we head into the next day, Tuesday. The market has Monday's U.S. session high, moves up towards the high from the inside of the box. One push, two pushes, three pushes, and we also have a middle structure in here, which is our M pattern. Engulfs, and then into the 12 candle Europe London window, the market is already in a stop hunt formation. So traders often say, well, you know, where would I have got in? You don't have to get in here. Remember, we're looking for structure to set up for us. So don't feel like you've ever missed a trade. You, there, you haven't missed anything. Because there isn't a 50 pip move right in London doesn't mean there isn't going to be a 150 pip move in the U.S. But we look for structure. So this is an existing short trade. If you were to do anything, you would only want to be shorting this market towards the low of the week. But each time traders try to short that, if they weren't already, or if they chase the trade, or they shorted it up top. Now again, we we don't we see a breakaway candle, but not an engulfment or a pin hammer. Similar to up top, similar to the previous sessions. But we get a redrawn high of the day, and we get a low of the day. The market heads lower, doesn't hit the stops, and then pulls back. In the middle three-hour window, some traders decide to go long somewhere in here. But it pulls back and stop hunts them. Doesn't take out their low. Possibly their stop was at the bottom of the day. Goes sideways. We get an engulfment just prior to the 12 candle window. Let's move this up. So we have a stop hunt on traders that are long. Remember the stop hunt in the hour before. Typically we'll go one, two, three to the extreme. We don't get that in this case. The stop hunt takes out trader stops who might be at break even. Goes sideways, gives us an engulfment, and then we get the bull pin hammer inside of the lower high after the engulfment as we headed into the 12 candle window. So some traders might think this is going to roll over for the measure move, but then bang, we get the, the big bull pin hammer and we're at numbers. So traders need to make a decision. They're in the market. At, you know, I, I get in a market, put my stop underneath, or fight for at least the spread uh, if that market pulls back. But what's important now is we have a pattern within a pattern. So not only do we have lower highs for a smaller rectangle, but we also have a symmetrical triangle. And what's important about that is we can have a measured move of the smaller rectangle which would give us a target to here but we also potentially have a high and low for the week for our geometrical structure so we have a pattern within a pattern we have a rectangle and then we have our 
high and low for Monday, Tuesday's initial balance. And that initial balance first target is that one full expansion of the range that take us up towards the 133.35 area. And I talk about how the market trades when it gets to those levels. That market explodes higher without hesitating. One, two, three. Now, some breakout traders would trade the breakout candle itself. The bullpen hammer is an entry if you weren't already in on the engulfment. Just speculating that this was going to reverse. But we don't really know until we see the bullpen hammer that this market is going to reverse. There's three entries. There's the break of the symmetrical triangle. There's the, the initial pin hammer, the break of the symmetrical triangle, and the break of the rectangle at the high for breakout traders. The market breaks out, pulls back, and consolidates before breaking out of the upper box. So when you get in a market that breaks out this aggressively, you're definitely targeting the measured move. And that was after one push, two pushes, three pushes down into the low of the day and the week without breaking the lows. This is the reverse of the sell high setup. This is a uh, ascending triangle, a symmetrical triangle. It can be grouped into any one of those, but the bottom line is we have geometry, we have structure, and we have a bigger structure for a pattern within a pattern and a measured move. That market explodes up, heads up into the next day. We talk about breakout pullback. So when a market moves this aggressively, we have a couple scenarios. We can see a stop hunt reversal. So we do the same thing the next day. We see a swing low, a pullback and a swing low. So we have so we have structure for the upper part of Asia now. We have a, a rectangle. The market reverses off the high of the day and breaks out of that upper rectangle and drops down for a measured move back inside. Let me just re remove this. You'll also, every swing low is potentially the bottom of the box. This market keeps going and breaks through these boxes. But right prior to our 12 candle Europe window, the market reverses on an engulfment and breaks higher. So now we have our high of the day and we have our low of the day. Okay. The market gives us a high of the day on a one, two, three back against traders who are long before reversing and hitting the high again. So we would redraw our high and we redraw our low. The market comes back one more time, one, two, three reversal engulfment. So we redraw our high each time it reverses and we redraw our low. The market goes one push, two pushes, one, two, three to the high. And then we get an engulfment at the high of the day after three pushes up in the middle three hour window prior to the US session. It engulfs off the high of the day, pinned to the high inside bar engulfment for a from high to low 50 pip move down to the low of the day. So remember the three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back and they trend. They break out, they pull back and they reverse. They break out, they pull back, and they stay in a trading range. So we have a market that is in a breakout mode, pulls back, tries to go down again. They hit the high, pulls down again, and they go up and hit the high one more time. So when we see this in retrospect, we traders have shorted this, but they go down to the low of the day. They hit the low and pull back. So now we see one push, two push, three pushes, Anchor point low, we're thinking measured move down. The market stalls at the low, breakout pullback, re false break reversal. Traders who may not have hit the inside bar after the pullback inside of the range would definitely have to be willing to participate in the breakout candle as now this down move has basically been nullified. We're in the 12 candle window. We have an engulfment reversal after a false break stop hunt to the low of the day. The market goes one, two, three to the high, hits the stops, going sideways, and then breakout candle again. So breakout traders would be positioned on the close of this candle. And again, we're talking about structure. So we have our high and we have our low for on the third leg, okay, for a, now a potential measured move, a geometrical structure for a measured move 
in an uptrend after a breakout pullback. We have structure, high and low. So low of the day, high of the day. Sold at the high, of the, the redrawn high of the day. Bought at the low of the day. And then measured move in a smaller pattern inside of a larger pattern. So coming back to our original initial balance, I, I just want to show traders the importance of these measured moves. So we have Monday's high and we have Monday's low. Two times at that box, breakout pullback and then a continuation takes us up to that 3418 area, two times the box. And we see as the week progresses, obviously, in that Thursday, the market pulled back, false break out of the redrawn rectangle, heading into Wednesday's close. Market breaks out, but pulls back, false break reversal before continuing. We talk about level three often blows off in the direction of the trend. That was payrolls, one push, two pushes, three pushes into the peak. Through our measured measured move of the range 200 percent plus before reversing and pulling back inside of wednesday's high and trading sideways so just to sort of put this in perspective uh, we don't know what the market's going to do but when we have a, a potential direction already in place because of, of a breakout pullback whatnot etc looking at this we have an anchor point low we have a high that's reversed. So we had a breakout of a trading range. The market pulled back inside of Wednesday's high low. So the market pulled back inside and gave us a peak formation low and reversal for a breaking out. That market has since failed and pulled back inside of the range. So this upper low, the highest low before the, the, the low before the high and the high itself, oops, I'll just get rid of this. And the high itself are now potentially our measuring range for a move back down if this market was to head down. So two times, two times this expansion would be back to the low of the week. Now, if we, we can look at this for a, a couple of different ways. We have a previous week's high back on June. 23rd and the market is currently trading sort of on top of that so we could actually see a measured move up but if this market fails we have a lot of space we have a big anchor point after one push two pushes and then a one two three to the high before dropping back and going sideways the market hit the stops on Thursday's low before pulling back but if this market was to break back through the low we could see a measured move at least possibly to Wednesday's low. If the market was to move up above that 34, uh, 25 level, we could see a retest of Thursday's high. But if it fails, we have geometry, we have structure for a measured move, and possibly even more depending on how hard that market would move in either direction. So again, I look at the high and the low for our initial balance, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and again, when that market sets up with smaller geometrical patterns, now we have patterns within patterns for potential bigger structural breakout measured moves. And when these show up, uh, they can offer traders fantastic risk reward in terms of asymmetry, one bar stop, and uh, these trades move fast. So the key is just, uh, again, having a simple process. Again, I talked about Peter Brand. I just... You know, I know Peter doesn't, he doesn't day trade, but his structural approach is the same. He looks at weekly charts, you know, 8, 12, 16 weeks in duration. When that builds up that kind of congestion and energy and you get these geometrical patterns and patterns within patterns, they can be explosive moves. And Peter says this, when the trades are right, they don't come back. They move very fast, they explode, and they're fantastic when you're in them. So... Hopefully you got value from today's video traders. We're going to see structure next week. We're going to have big moves, keeping it simple, 12 candle window, high and low of the day, timings, round numbers, engulfments and pin hammers. Keep it simple. If I keep it simple, I can duplicate it. If I duplicate it and get consistent, I can scale up. And if I scale up, 
who knows what we can do. Just 1% better every day. Keep getting better. Have a great weekend, and may the market Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.